Okay. Uh, let me hide this. So, yep, I'm Martina Erskine. I'm a family nurse practitioner. I'm currently doing my fellowship in anti-aging medicine, and I learn a lot about the cortisol, and I would like to talk about it today and tell you a little bit more about that hormone and also how we can manage it and how we can manage stress. Um, so, a fun fact, um, 75 to 90% of visits to primary care doctors are actually stress-related. So there's a lot of diseases and a lot of conditions in our body uh, that are there because they started with the stress. Um, chronic stress. Um, chronic stress actually has been shown to accelerate aging uh, cause premature death and also shortens telomeres. So telomeres are those the endings on the DNA uh, that actually longer the endings, the longer people live and the younger they are. Um, so over years, they're getting shorter and shorter and shorter and it causes a little bit DNA damage. So, um, and stress additionally shortens those telomeres, which proves to accelerate the aging. So what are the stressors? There's so many stressors in our body. There are emotional stressors, physical stressors, um, inflammatory stressors, like eating inflammatory food, uh, lack of sleep is a stressor, uh, lack of exercise, but also excessive exercise is a stress to our body, like marathon runners, for example. Um, sugar is a stressor, um, plastic, and some of the cosmetics, and alcohol, of course. So what's cortisol? Cortisol is a stress hormone that is produced in adrenal glands. Adrenal glands are those triangle looking glands on the top of our kidneys. Um, they're responsible for producing a lot of other hormones um, like testosterone, estrogen, um, aldosterone, and cortisone. Cortisol, it's like an inactive form of cortisol. With age, all our hormones goes down. Um, our testosterone goes down, our estrogen goes down, progesterone. However, cortisol is the only hormone in our body that actually uh, increases with age. Um, and cortisol usually goes up when there's like a stressful situation in our life. And then after we kind of relax, it should go down. However, in a modern world, we very often exposed to like a chronic constant level of stress. So the decrease in cortisol sometimes does not happen in modern world. So what are some function of cortisol? Stress reaction, it's actually anti-inflammatory. That's like the only one good things almost that <laughs> a cortisol does. Um, cause bone loss, it's uh, responsible for mood and thoughts, influences testosterone and other uh, hormones, elevates blood pressure, decreases antibody production, uh, weight control actually causes the um, weight gain, um, inhibits protein synthesis and increases gastric acid production which can increase the GERD or like reflex too. So this is like a nice uh, little picture that shows that cortisol basically impacts all uh, systems in our body, all cells, so many organs. Um, so plays really, really important role in our body. Before we start talking about that, uh, Cortisol, we should talk about HPA axis, which is actually the whole process of stress. So first we're exposed to stress and it goes to our brain and our brain is stressed out. And the stress signals goes to um, hypothalamus. And hypothalamus um, releases corticotropin releasing hormone. And that hormone goes to a pituitary gland. That's the other gland that is located in our brain. And a pituitary gland then increases adrenocorticotropic hormone, and that one goes to adrenal glands, and adrenal glands produce cortisol. And this is all the stress response. It's called HPA axis. So allostasis. Allostasis is like a process of uh, ability to achieve the stability through change. So it's, a, it's our body ability to balance itself after stressful situation. And it's very, very critical to survival. We're exposed to stress and we're not supposed to adapt to it. However, very often there's so much stresses in our body that our body cannot adapt to it anymore. And that's called allostatic load. When there's too much stress from uh, like external stress and internal stressors um, that we cannot adapt to and that causes the allostatic load. So chronic uh, stress cascade. First, we're exposed to a lot of a lot of stress and um, 
thalamus, pituitary gland, and adrenal gland produce so much cortisol and we have cortisol excess and the cortisol excess cause a lot of, a lot of damage in our body. So the body trying to protect itself and then shuts down cortisol production. And finally that leads to cortisol deficiency, which is called adrenal fatigue too. Impact of cortisol in our body. So hippocampus, uh, the first um, structure in our brain, uh, that uh, has like the biggest amount of uh, cortisol receptors. So when there's, we are exposed to a lot of stress, cortisol goes there and start actually over time damaging uh, hippocampus and shrink it. And that is even proven, uh, shown on the MRI, especially for like postmenopausal women with chronic stress, um, it shows reduction in a gray matter volume in a, a hippocampus. The hippocampus gets shrinked and it's responsible for memory. So sometimes the first uh, thing we see, the first symptoms we see in our patients over a uh, prolonged period of chronic stress is decreasing memory. Uh, other structure, uh, amygdala. Uh, amygdala is uh, responsible for emotional stability. So over time, people end up having more like fear and anger response to stress. Hypothalamus is responsible for sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. Sympathetic is the flight and fight, parasympathetic is rest and digest. So those systems um, get imbalanced and uh, people end up having a depression, PTSD, and anxiety. And last thing is the prefrontal cortex, and that one is responsible for uh, executive decision making. And cognition and also personality. So over a prolonged period of stress, observe like changes in personality, hard to make any decisions and uh, impact basically our intelligence. So cortisol and other hormones. Cortisol basically decreases all hormones. Once cortisol is high, everything goes down. It's anti-testosterone, um, decreases testosterone dramatically, decreases progesterone, um, has a huge impact on thyroid hormone, also decreases estrogen in women, and that causes also decline in uh, serotonin, dopamine, norepinephrine, and acetylcholine, which are all very important neurotransmitters in our body. And also uh, increases insulin and decreases insulin sensitivity to the cells. So even if we produce more insulin, our cells stop being sensitive to the insulin and don't bind to it and it's not working anymore. And that causes like a spike in blood sugar. So consequences of high cortisol. Confusion and poor memory, I already mentioned that is just because it damaged our brain over a prolonged period of time. So it causes confusion, poor memory, low energy, increased in infection rate, increased insulin, insulin resistance, increases blood sugar, increases triglycerides, uh, causes night sweats, a binge eating, and also shakiness between meals. And other consequences of high cortisol are impaired hepatic conversion of T4 to T3. So very often patients are taking Centroid and it's a synthetic form of T4. However, uh, due to high um, stress, they cannot convert T4 to T3, which is the active form of thyroid hormone. Um, and their thyroid is low. And no matter how much thyroid we give to patients like that, how much medication we give them and how much testosterone we give them, over a prolonged period of time, they don't feel the benefits of the hormones. And we see that often with people very, very stressed out and uh, have a fatigue, weakness, poor memory. We put them on hormones and they feel amazing because we fix everything right away. However, over a prolonged period of time of chronic stress, all those hormones goes down and they start saying like, it's not working for me anymore. And it's because we replace the hormones. However, patients never work on their cortisol, never work on their stress reduction. Um, other things that cause uh, consequences of high cortisol are sleep disturbances, increased cholesterol, easy bruising, muscle weakness, weight gain, especially around the middle, and increase, increased blood pressure. So this is progression of adrenal um, fatigue. So first we have like a normal level of cortisol and over a prolonged period of time of stress, our cortisol is going higher, 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 and it's constantly high. And this is the time when we can still fix it. This is the time when we can still work on adrenal glands. We can still work on a st a stress reduction techniques and all of that. However, over a prolonged period of time, uh, so much cortisol causes brain damage and brain says no more. 
and then brain turns off the adrenals to uh, produce cortisol. So adrenal shuts down, cortisol production, they kind of start shrinking. And then over time, cortisol actually goes down. Unfortunately, DHEA is a really important hormone in our body, and it's also produced in adrenals. So uh, when brain shuts down cortisol production, the DHEA production also goes down. It's called adrenal fatigue, which I think it's not a good name for, for this because it's not really adrenal fatigue. It's a body fatigue. It's a whole body. It's uh, just so tired and no longer can tolerate high levels of cortisol, especially our brain because it gets damaged because uh, it's atrophy, which is shrinking of some parts of the brain. So adrenal fatigue, it's not really uh, the right name for this condition. It's like a body fatigue. Over a prolonged period of time, we start having a very low cortisol. So before we say, what are the symptoms of the high cortisol? This is the symptoms of the low cortisol and low DHEA and lack of stamina, low blood pressure. You saw previously it was high blood pressure with the high cortisol. However, over a prolonged period of time, blood pressure drops. Um, people start having sensitivity to light, insomnia, digestive problems, um, emotional imbalances, lack of motivation, poor wound healing, and hypoglycemia. Um, other things are decreased um, sexual interest, more prone to allergies, unresponsive to hypothyroidism. Unresponsive to hypothyroidism, that's what I was talking about. Those are the people when we put them on um, natural thyroid medications and they feel amazing, oh, but over a prolonged period of time, they say medication doesn't work for them. They just want bigger and bigger doses. That's not the issue. We have to treat cortisol and we have to treat the stress first because the medication is not going to work. Another symptoms will be feeling of being overwhelmed, alcoholism, and drug addiction, basically seeking um, help somewhere else. So how the typical day look like for the person that have a very, very low cortisol? Um, so first, it's really hard for them to wake up. Then the fatigue kind of decreases until lunch. All of a sudden, they have a little bit of energy, like mid-afternoon, and then... Um, and increase energy after 6 p.m. Those are the people that say like, oh, I'm not a morning person. I have so much energy at night. It's just because of the chronic stress. And then they're tired again around 9 to 10 p.m. And then, then second burst of energy at 11. They stay on the computer. They like do their work. They say like, oh, I'm a night all. I can just like work right now. And then the best uh, refreshing sleep they get between 7 to 9 a.m. So diagnosis, how to see if the patient actually have high or low cortisol or, or like chronic stress. The best is to do just a hormone panel, see how all the hormones look like. Um, if they're like if testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, and thyroid, everything is down, then we know there's something else going on, not just menopause, not just aging. It must be a cortisol, must be a chronic stress. We also check patients' vitamins, like vitamin D, um, a B vitamins, which are homocysteine and also ferritin. That's our like a hormone panel at Joe Wellness Partners that we do. And that one can help us to figure out what's going on. And once we think like, oh, it might be adrenal fatigue, hormone imbalances, uh, maybe some chronic stress based on also interview, then we can do um, saliva test. And saliva test, uh, it's recommended just because cortisol drawn uh, from their blood that doesn't really represent uh, the cortisol level. First of all, we have to see how the whole day look like because cortisol changes after we wake up with our cortisol supposed to be the highest. This is when we're supposed to be the most alert, ready to start the day. And the go days go by, our cortisol supposed to go down and almost go to zero at night. So the melatonin can take over and we can sleep and have a good, nice restful sleep. Um, to do that test, we have to do saliva test. And like you say, it's like four or six points test uh, to check if we have this cortisol awakening response, which uh, shortcut for it is CAR. What does the cortisol awakening re response look like if they wake up and they actually cortisol goes up or does not? Sometimes it can go too much and this is when we can still treat it and this is when we can still address high cortisol. And sometimes when patient has a flat, flat line and it's right on the bottom and there's no cortisol production, we know it's like an end stage of adrenal fatigue. And this is the patient that we have to treat a little bit differently because it's hard to reverse it. So the best test for it, it's four point or six point saliva test. We use a Dutch company. Um, you, they basically send you um, 
little vials, um, you speed to it at a certain times, and then, then you send it to a lab and they calculate your uh, car, cortisol awakening response. So that's how the tests usually report look like. You can see where, where should be the high value limits, where's the low value limits, and where is where you stand. So this patient has like um, adrenal fatigue, there's no cortisol anymore. So that's an example of the um, test report and that comes with so many different pages explaining everything too. And what can we do with high stress and high cortisol? There's a lot of things. We can convert stress to wellness. <laughs> I just love that picture. So number one thing is stress reduction techniques like meditation, um, some moderate exercises, mindfulness, um, cognitive of, uh, behavioral training, cognitive therapy, relaxation therapy, yoga, it's really good, visualization, breathing exercises, and sleep hygiene. Sleep, it's really, really important to work on sleep. But sleep hygiene is like, it's when you go to bed every time at the same time, uh, making sure there's no light in your room. It's like the whole sleep hygiene uh, process. You can find a lot of information about it online. And other thing, it's adaptogens. So what are adaptogens? They're basically like a natural compound from herbs and plants that help adapt to stress. They've been used for years in a natural medicine. They work on brain and they restore HPA axis. They're harmless. There's no side effects to it. They are non-specific. Um, they increase resistance to a variety of physical and chemical or biological stressors. Um, acts as normalizers and um, increase natural killer cells to so help with our immune system as well because they enhance interleukin one, and interleukin six, and also uh, inhibits replication of RNA viruses. So it's really good to just every day for any reason, especially like right now with COVID. So a couple of my favorite one. Um, I'm not gonna mention all the adaptogens. There's so many of them, uh, but. One of my favorite ones, L-theanine. I put that one every day in my coffee so I can have a good energy, but also stable and calm energy. It's a natural amino acid find a green tea. Some people that drink in the morning green tea, they already get that. However, I love coffee. So I'm adding that one to my coffee. Um, it's used as a relaxing and anxiolytic medication. Um, improved focus, memory, cognition, increases GABA and dopamine levels. So the dose, it's usually between 200 to 400 milligrams a day. Another one is ashwagandha. Ashwagandha is good for everything. Um, arthritis, anxiety, insomnia, stress. Uh, you can add that to your coffee too. Uh, some people like to take ashwagandha at night, 500 milligrams every night helps them sleep, helps them relax and lower cortisol at night. So it's not uh, waking them in the middle of the night. RG3, I mentioned that one just because sometimes people are wondering what's RG3. It's basically like uh, one of the ingredients from ginseng roots. So it's like ginseng. And that one also has some um, decreases oxidative stress. It's anti-inflammatory and you want to take five milligrams uh, twice a day on empty stomach. So first thing in the morning and for last thing at night. And then you do it three months all and then uh, you stop for two weeks. It's like a pulsation therapy. So elevated cortisol pattern. So depends on what we have. Um, if we have a high cortisol or we have a low cortisol or you have a mix of cortisol, we can use different adaptogens for it. So for example, for elevated cortisol pattern, we wanna calm it down at the morning and at night. So it's really important to do saliva tests so you know where you stand because what it will depress your cortisol in the morning. However, you already have like low cortisol in the morning. Then it's good to do the test. However, if some people don't want to do saliva tests, they can just take adaptogens that relax you at night and that will still have a good effect on them. So uh, relaxing adaptogens are ashwagandha, L-theanine, uh, rilora, um, rhodiola, polybasil, phosphatidylserine, RG3 that I already mentioned, some roots and melatonin and depressed cortisol. So what are the adaptogens that will kind of increase our cortisol in the morning? Um, the best one are like licorice, glandular, and ginseng. Ginseng is actually uh, pretty stimulatory. So it's a like, good um, to drink in a tea every morning instead of coffee. And mixed cortisol, you can use those um, adaptogens that kind of, uh, you can take them in the morning and you can take them at night and then once suppress your cortisol too much in the morning, however, it will help you sleep at night. 
So this is a couple of my favorite brands of adaptogens. You can, you don't have to buy all the herbs and mix them together and drink the tea. You can already have them in a peel form and just take it like twice a day or take it only at night. One of my favorites are the Adrenal. I like the Adrenal Vibe from Orthomolecular. Um, that one has just adaptogens. However, this one, Adaptogen All, has also some vitamins in it that are also very important in stress management. And Cortisol Manager from Integrative um, Therapeutics. I like that one too. Other compounds that will help with a chronic stress. Vitamin C, B vitamins, calcium, magnesium, zinc, selenium, copper, all the electrolytes, um, sodium, manganese, uh, sterolins, 5-HTP. It's really good one for, um, 5-HTP actually works like really great as an antidepressant, almost as well as SSRIs. And nicotamine riboside, which is precursor to NAD. Magnesium, it's a really good one. It's a muscle relaxer. Uh, 50% of magnesium is actually stored in the bones, 50% is intracellular, and it participates in 300 enzymatic reaction in the body, uh, feeds, feeds the blood source, natural blood thinner, just like omegas, um, relax blood vessels, and increases uh, oxygenation of the heart. So other things we can do, stellar ganglion block, that's me actually, a picture of me getting stellar ganglion block. Hypothalamus is responsible for our like, um, sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. And how I mentioned uh, before, sympathetic nervous system, it's a fight and flight response and parasympathetic, it's rest and digest. Over a prolonged period of stress and um, our sympathetic nervous system takes over and we're constantly in fight and flight response. And then, then parasympathetic nervous system, like digestion and rest cannot work properly. So there's a procedure we can do. It's called Stelly Ganglion Block. We do it at, uh, here in the clinic. Uh, when we block uh, ganglion, um, stellar ganglion, which is like a group of nerves on our neck, we block it for like three to six hours to kind of turn off sympathetic nervous system for a little bit so the parasympathetic uh, nervous system can recover. And also it, it's kind of like reboosting like your computer, like turning it off and back on uh, to kind of like help with, you know, help this work better, like pause it for a second. So it's really great. Those are all um, benefits of um, Stella Ganglion Bar, Crystal's emotional and mental clarity. I totally experienced that. It's really, it was discovered uh, mostly for uh, PTSD disorder in military men. Now we use it for depression, for anxiety, for PTSD, and also for people with digestive issue because uh, it kind of helps, you know, reboost the, the systems. Um, and that's how the procedure looked like. This patient uh, was very, very nervous. So we actually gave him some products, which is laughing gas. So he could um, so he could relax a little bit before getting a needle in the neck. Um, it's all ultrasound guided. Um, and we have a doctor sonographers that uh, specialize in that, Dr. Meng. Uh, what else can help? NAD IV. So we provide them also here in the clinic. Um, NAD is like a precursor to ATP, and ATP is the energy that we need in every single cell. It's really great, repairs DNA, regulates metabolism. Some people will say that really helps them with GI tract, um, reduces some inflammatory pain, elevates mood. I really uh, felt like improving cognition uh, after the NAD, and uh, it really helped with my uh, memory. Um, and it's a natural compound occurring in our body. Um, cerebral lysin, I want to mention that one because it's a peptide that we have here on the clinic too. And that's one of the peptides. I think there's only two of them that can actually penetrate the blood brain barrier and actually repair the nerve cells in our brain. So it's really uh, used for TBI, which is traumatic brain injury. It's really good for patients with Parkinson's, eye tremor, uh, multiple sclerosis, stroke, um, basically helps to promote the growth of the new brain cells. Another thing is neurofeedback therapy. We also have a um, neurofeedback therapy here in the clinic. Um, Tena does them and they also help to kind of uh, remodel our brain, reheal it, like all those brain cells after a prolonged period of uh, chronic stress. And ketamine infusion. Ketamine infusion is also really great. You can watch a video of uh, Dr. Mulcahy explaining that procedure. She's the one that um, does them mostly in our clinic and also Carlos, um, our nurse anesthetist. Um, it's really good for, for brain, for depression, for PTSD and anxiety. So conclusion, uh, cortisol 
uh, and stress are tightly integrated with all systems in our body. Low cortisol level and flattening curve are adaptive mechanisms to protect the brain. So when the cortisol is low, it's because it was very, very high before, and our brain was trying to adapt and protect itself and lower it. It's really worth to check where you are if you are like still on a high cortisol level, or maybe you're already like exposed to chronic stress or prolonged period of time, and now we have to treat your low cortisol, which is so much harder to treat because we have to reverse all those processes that happen already in your body. And we have to convince your brain to turn it on at the production of uh, cortisol again and, and, and trust the process again. Sooner we'll take care of it, the better. Okay, thank you so much for listening. Hopefully it wasn't too overwhelming. And let me check the questions. Can you do ketamine as and stellar ganglion block together? Yes, absolutely. We have a patients that do stellar ganglion block and after that they do um, six um, ketamine drips because that's recommended for depression and, and PTSD, four to six um, drips. Uh, so yeah, you can do them together in combination. No, hormone balancing with testosterone will not harm your adrenals. Uh, the question was like, will hormone balancing with testosterone harm your adrenals? No, it won't harm it. Uh, cortisol, however, harm like other uh, hormones, like decreases them. So if we won't manage cortisol and we'll give you some testosterone, it might work for some time. However, then cortisol is anti-testosterone. So over time, you can depress that. But um, it's a good first step to start to uh, replace all the hormones that are low. And that's what we do. We check the blood work. If patients' uh, hormones are low, we, keep, we put them on testosterone, estrogen, progesterone repeated, and a thyroid medication. And then also, if we suspect that it's adrenal uh, fatigue, then we put them on adaptogens. What is the best way to not wake up in the middle of the night? Waking up in the middle of the night, it can be, there can be many reasons. Um, it could be sometimes if you like eat too much sugar at night, uh, like last thing at night you ate sugar and then the sugar spikes and then goes down and you kind of wake up in the middle of the night because you have a hypoglycemia or hyperglycemia. So it's very important to eat some protein uh, right before going to bed to prevent that. Uh, sometimes cortisol wakes up in the middle of the night. So that's why it's really important to take some adaptogens uh, right before going to bed, like ashwagandha, 500 milligrams or L-theanine. How many NAD IVs will it take to feel an effect? You feel effect with the first NAD IV. The first one is the most powerful. And you feel really, really like refreshed, like almost like a new person. Um, for me, it was the cognition and memory like improved so much. And first NAD infusion was very profound for me. And then after that, every time I do the next one, the next one, next one, I feel the uh, effect of it. However, it wasn't as profound as the first one. Um, can you benefit from taking adaptogens even if you don't have issue with your cortisol levels? Absolutely. Anybody can take adaptogens. The, most of the adaptogens also have nootropic uh, properties, which means they help with memory, learning, cognition, and all of that. So yeah, absolutely. Everybody will benefit from adaptogens. You can add them to your coffee in the morning. You can take them at night. Um, there's no harm to the, uh, and there's no side effects of adaptogens. What's the best way to find out which option is best for you? Um, yeah, the best way to find out is do the blood work because when we do your blood work, we do all hormonal panel and then we see which hormones are low. So if all the hormones are low for you, then the, of course the best thing will be to replace the hormones. However, if your hormones are just fine, like on a lower le level uh, and based on your symptoms looks like you mostly deal with PTSD and then anxiety and it's more like mental. However, your body that didn't respond to it uh, physically yet then it's um, the best is to address the mental health first, which you can do it quick by doing um, stellar ganglion block, or you can just uh, naturally start with adaptogens. Uh, do you sell all this stuff in your office? So yes, peptides, we have it in our office. Some of them we don't keep in stock. So we actually order straight from compounding pharmacies to your, and we send it straight to your home. As some of the vitamins we have and then adaptogens we do have in the office. We have like cortisol manager and E adrenal. Um, however, if we don't have something in the office, we work with full script and we send you a link and you can purchase our favorite products online straight from the website. 
I have fibromyalgia and diabetes too, and everything sounds familiar. Where would be starting point? Yeah, the starting point will be a blood work. Check all your hormones, do the initial blood work and consultation and see where you are and then come up with the treatment because it's hard to treat without like having uh, the whole physical assessment. And um, we treat based on symptoms and we treat based on the uh, lab results. Okay, looks like those are all the questions. So like I said, we can schedule an appointment with the provider, 15 minutes complimentary. I can explain more things and the procedures that we do here and we can start working on your health. Thank you so much, guys. Have a wonderful day.